Hello, I am Dr. Brandon Dennis. I'm a neuropsychologist here with the Norton Memory Center, part of Norton Neuroscience Institute. So today I'm gonna to talk briefly, uh, the, the title we came up with for this talk was something that probably we've, we've all encountered. I've lost my keys, have I lost my mind? Basically, we're gonna talk about normal brain aging versus abnormal aging. So I think it's important to start talking, you know, talk about dementia to cover some basics here. So there are a lot of misconceptions out there, and, and these are things that hopefully we can clear up. So does everybody get dementia when they get older? Uh, this, is, this is commonly held uh, as, as reality, but in fact, no, that's not what we find. It's not an expectation that as we get older, we, we develop a dementia. Now, at the same time, age is the number one risk factor really for every type of dementia. So it, it sometimes you'll hear is called a disease of old age, which I think is what leads to sometimes the, the reverse uh, deduction there that everybody will get it if we, if we get older. So for the most part, it's an aging related condition. There are some forms of course, uh, the caveat, there are some forms that can present at a younger age, sometimes as early as age 40. Things like a frontotemporal dementia, for example, can present, uh, uh, typically do present sometime in the, the mid 40s to kind of mid 60s. But those are uh, rarer conditions and actually account for a lot a smaller number of total cases of dementia. So let's talk about what dementia actually is. It's really an umbrella term. We'll hear that this very commonly in our clinic, uh, the difference in dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So dementia really is the umbrella term. It, it's describing the behavior. So dementia is this behavioral change that a person may demonstrate. It's something that we diagnose clinically on the basis of signs and symptoms, and we use some uh, adjunct testing and, and uh, 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 clinical investigations to rule some other things out. Dementia is caused by something. So the dementia is really what we're observing. It's the change that you notice at home, changes in thinking, changes in functional status. It's caused by something. There's an underlying disease process. So uh, for example, Alzheimer's disease is the most commonly uh, encountered, it's the one we know the most about. It probably accounts for anywhere from 70, 70 to 80% uh, of all uh, types of dementia. As we're learning now, as we have more information uh, on patients and we have more advanced techniques for investigating this, we find that lots of people actually have evidence in their brain of more than one type. So when a person develops Alzheimer's disease, they may also have the pathology that would reflect uh, a vascular or cerebrovascular type process or potentially a vascular dementia. So really 50% or more of those patients who clinically have uh, Alzheimer's disease also show enough pathology there to make a diagnosis for another type. So broadly speaking, dementia reflects a decline in your global cognitive ability. So this is your, your, think, your overall thinking skills. And, and these are made up of lots of uh, components. So attention and concentration, memory and language, those kinds of abilities. Cognitive is, is just our fancy word for thinking. So there's a decline as compared to what a person's baseline is. So it's important when we're, uh, we're assessing for dementia for us to consider a person's baseline. And we look at things like uh, your education level, your uh, reading ability. You know, we have to factor in things like uh, learning disabilities or reading difficulty people might have experienced. Uh, in some cases, we factor in uh, region of the country where, where they grew up, the kinds of uh, jobs a person held. These kinds of things we all factor in to try to get a really good estimate of where a person was functioning to start with so that we know if there's been a change. We're talking about impairment in specific cognitive domains. So these are again, domains of thinking. Memory is gonna be the most commonly encountered one. This is usually how people notice something like uh, an Alzheimer's type dementia is coming on. 
they see a change in, in memory as far as forgetfulness, misplacing items, those kinds of things. Uh, typically, it's in more than one domain. It may not start or be obvious in, in more than one, but with time, it will progress uh, and, and include others, attention, language, uh, visual, perceptual, constructional skills, things like that. And the, the third prong here of these uh, pieces of what dementia is, a decline in ability to manage daily tasks. Okay, so these are, uh, these can range from your, your basic, what we call ADLs, activities of daily living, like getting dressed, uh, taking a bath, brushing your teeth, those kinds of things, uh, all the way up to more instrumental ADLs, like managing the bills, paying, uh, writing a check, driving, um, keeping track of appointments, scheduling and, and tracking and going to appointments, uh, managing medications and refills and things of that nature. So lots of things could cause this. Let's say, for example, somebody has a, a, a very serious illness that requires hospitalization. We know that's something that occurs frequently as, as we get older, lots of medical comorbidities. So if, uh, let's say somebody's had a fall and they've had maybe a, 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 a fracture of the leg or something, that wouldn't really count as something that interferes with your ability to do daily tasks. Of course, it's gonna interfere, but we're not concerned about that sort of thing because there's a real good medical explanation for that. We're talking about there's no other good explanation for this change in a person's functional status. So let's talk a little bit about normal aging. So we've laid the groundwork here that not everybody's going to develop dementia. Uh, but what we do know is thinking skills are going to change over time. Uh, most of you, any of you in the audience, you've already observed that. If you think about your ability to concentrate, to focus, your ability to, uh, to quickly read and, and come up with words, uh, to process, you may, you may think back on your life and you've had various points where you were really good at some of these things, maybe not as good now, or in fact, some of these things you might actually feel better at now than you ever were when you were younger. So why do these changes happen? Brain volume decreases. This is a normal expectation, about seven uh, cubic centimeters per year after age 65. So you're losing these microscopic uh, uh, neurons. A lot of this loss is happening in the frontal and the temporal lobes. The frontal lobe is pretty obvious up in the front here, temporal lobes back here. Now those areas are very important for concentrating, planning, coordinating. Uh, the temporal lobes are responsible for lots of actions and that's in fact, where most of our memory and language functions are centered. So we expect some change in those areas and the functions that they control with time. There's a greater loss of white matter than gray matter in cognitively normal adults. Again, this is the kind of thing we expect to see. Even this uh, cerebral blood flow, what we would talk about is perfusion of blood, oxygenated blood in, in the brain, decreases a, a fair percent. Uh, and this fluctuation in blood pressure, we, we know that, uh, uh, I say this all the time to patients, even often, even when you have a diagnosis of hypertension, maybe you take medications for that, uh, or, or you have the exact opposite where you have maybe a low blood pressure and uh, various things can kind of help keep that regulated. These fluctuations, even when they're under pretty good control, sometimes can cause this deterioration that the very mechanisms that sort of maintain blood flow and, and keeping things working normally. Over time, those can add up and, and, and result in more significant changes. So we have what we'll, we'll term here as age-related cognitive decline. So this is not dementia. I'm not talking about uh, the dementia that we described a few slides back. This is simply cognitive change attached to aging, what we would expect normal people to do that, that the average uh, older adult would experience. So things like episodic and working memory, your episodic memory is really your memory for events, what you did, what you had for breakfast in the morning, what you did yesterday afternoon, what you did last week, um, those kinds of things you, you encounter in your daily life and your ability to recall those things. Working memory is keeping track of information on the short term, 
putting things in your head to use. Uh, a real good example is getting a phone number and going to type that in to, to make a phone call. You retain that just long enough to, to use it and then you and then you get rid of it because you have no need to commit that to long-term memory. Things like executive functioning, that's the planning, uh, coordinating, organizing, really the multitasking. Those are all the most affected areas by what we call normal aging. So again, as we get older, we expect there's gonna be some change in memory, in your sort of concentration and your ability to multitask. You might need to hear things more than once. You might need to uh, slow things down, break things down into smaller parts. These are, like we said, light, uh, late life changes, usually six decade and later in your 60s and beyond, tend to have a linear or potentially an accelerating decline with further aging. So you might notice more of a drop here. And in, in again, the normal curve uh, in a person that as we get much, much older. Processing speed decreases with age. Now that's ability to carry out things motorically, visually, or even simply uh, 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 just cognitively. This decreases with age. It can have more of a global effect on other domains. Anything like attention, processing, and, and so forth that requires you to think quickly to come up with words, it can affect that too if you're, you're generally slow. Executive function, as I mentioned before, this is, this is critical for engaging purposeful, independent, um, self-preserving kinds of behavior. These things tend to decline more dramatically after age 70. Attention span is going to decrease even with more simple tasks. So um, things like uh, uh, your environment, the things that you encounter, your visual uh, attention, your ability to kind of attend to multiple pieces of information out in space, hearing something while you're looking at something and being confronted with other other uh, uh, stimuli in your environment, it gets a lot harder to make sense of that stuff. When you're younger, you get pretty good at that. Uh, uh, children can do this fairly well, young adults. So things like problem solving, you know, it, of course these things happen. We, we talk about acceleration as we get older and kind of later into life. But some things like problem solving, reasoning about unfamiliar things, processing, learning new information, attending, manipulating the environment, actually show a steady decline, a very, very steady decline after they peak around age 30. So some of these things, you're really never going to be as good as you are, uh, you know, in your late 20s into, into your early 30s. And from there, it's just a tiny bit of decline steadily, gradually over the rest of your life. Language skills. So we talk about verbal fluency, coming up with words under certain con uh, certain conditions, uh, the ability to name objects. Those things also show some late life decline. Again, particularly after age seventy, we don't expect to see too much change there, other than maybe some processing speed changes and, and, and that sort of thing. But we do see those affected. So there is a silver lining here. Okay, it's not all bad news. Certain kinds of memory, things like procedural memory, primary or, or semantic memory, these things are well preserved with age. So procedural memory is your, your ability to, to do something. So lots of overlearned kinds of tasks, uh, that your ability to, to, to implement the steps in order to accomplish something. So a lot of people who you, you maybe retire, you worked a mechanical kind of job, a lot of people take those skills and they carry them into older uh, adulthood. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, they're tracks that are well laid down in, in your long-term memory. Semantic memory is, is sort of object knowledge. Um, it's, it's some facts and, and names and uh, uh, purpose and use of some object. So coming up with that kind of thing, we would not expect much change there. Uh, so when we see these things, when we see uh, patients present to our clinic and there are concerns with uh, loss of procedural memory and knowledge, loss of semantic knowledge, uh, we, we uh, you know, develop some concern there because those are things we wouldn't expect to see very much of a change. Skills, ability, knowledge, like I said, these kind of overlearned, uh, 
well practiced. Lots of things like a, a vocabulary, even just sort of general knowledge, just just knowledge of, of things, of, of information. A lot of those remain stable or, or even can improve uh, up through through the 70s. A couple other things, just looking at lots of studies out there at measuring all kinds of, of cognitive functions with older adults. Uh, they may be more accurate judging distances. Um, Ability to recognize familiar objects and faces remains pretty much uh, uh, stable over time, uh, as well as a appropriate visual perception for objects. So these things are, are pretty good, despite some of the changes in vision we experience later in life. Our, our ability to, to interpret visual stimuli in front of us, which is a cognitive function versus a binocular function, uh, those things remain stable. So, this brings me around to what, what's the value of objective information? So we know lots of things can cause changes in memory and thinking and, and your ability to pay attention and concentrate uh, any number of factors. And it, it's almost a, a, an unlimited list, but a lot of these things we expect are certain medical conditions we find in life uh, that are tied to cognitive changes, sometimes medication effects, uh, sleep disturbances, certainly stress, lots of factors. So it can be difficult to know with all of these things going on, whether these changes really we think are normal for aging, whether they might be temporary or reversible. So that's, uh, that's a topic that's kind of beyond the scope and, and time limit of what we're covering today, but there are some potentially reversible causes. And uh, these are the kinds of things we're going to investigate with, with laboratory values, with imaging of the brain, those kinds of things. We want to we want to reverse anything that's that's potentially causing this and uh, rule it out. Or whether these changes may actually reflect pathologic changes in the brain. So that's kind of what we're getting down to when we talk about de dementia and, and the concern for that, wanting to treat that. We want to rule out certain things. We want to exclude normal aging. So bringing it back around full circle here, Am I losing my mind? So you misplace your keys. Uh, maybe it happens a few times in a given week. Um, are you losing your mind? Well, hopefully not. I hope that I, I've given you a little bit of information. Don't be too alarmed. We expect to see cognitive changes as we age. At the same time, if you start to see these things in, in yourself, uh, if you start to see these in a family member, relative, friend, uh, you see them more frequently. Now, again, lots of things can cause that. If you're in a particularly uh, stressful situation, it's not uncommon for all kinds of mental errors to occur. When the mistakes are, are more costly, so when you see things occurring that, uh, you know, for which there are, there are uh, significant consequences, uh, driving and, and, and an accident in which the, the driver is at fault or uh, mistakes with finances that, that could jeopardize uh, you know, the home or, or the automobile, that kind of thing, life insurance policies, health insurance. Those things are, are kind of high stakes mistakes and you wanna keep an eye out for those things. Also when changes are not characteristic for the person, so we hear all the time people uh, people come come into our clinic and you know perhaps we're uh, kind of an absent-minded person or, or, or forgetful or disorganized. So if you know your loved one well, you know what's typical for them, what's characteristic. So some changes we account for uh, in normal aging, but if you start to see these things that are really out of character, happening more frequently, potentially more uh, you know more harmful kinds of mistakes and things that are happening, it's potential to be concerned. And again, when these errors are not better explained by some other factors, like we said, lots of different things can cause changes in memory and thinking, lots of things can cause uh, mistakes with, with the bills and, and the medications and things. But if you're ruling those things out and you're still finding difficulty, then probably you, you wanna uh, connect and, and get those things evaluated. Okay. That's all I have for today as far as uh, covering this information. Uh, Dr. Cooper is hosting a, a question and answer session. If you have any questions from, from my talk, I know he would be uh, uh, thoroughly qualified to answer those. Otherwise, I'm happy to 
to discuss personally if uh, you know if if we can do that. But thank you so much.